Hello, hello everybody. Welcome into My Sweet Home Living. Today, we have a little last minute unexpected live, so hop on in here. We've got a fun Christmas primitive can light for you today. And of course, we're all about repurposing um, things that we would normally throw away, and that is what we are doing today. <laughs> that is what we're doing today. So hop on in here, tell me hello and where you're watching from, and uh, we'll see who we can get on today. I've got a fun project I really think you're gonna like, and it's all Christmas themed, um, and it's using grocery trash and turning it into something um, beautiful for your home and this will be Christmas themed today so but I think you can take the same idea and turn it into something that you can use every day just depending on what you want to do good morning well said good morning well yes it is still for about 40 minutes <laughs> it's still good morning here in West Kentucky hello Miss Cheryl hey Donna from Massachusetts thank you for letting me know where you were tuning in from this is a 45 minute segment that is also cross streaming over into the Facebook group uh, called craft on the clock so if you're not familiar with craft on the clock check us out and if you'd like to know more information send me a message I'd be glad to share information with you on that amazing group we have live crafting every day Monday through Friday early morning to late at night if you don't see something now that you like you'll see something uh, the next 45 minutes that you'll probably like and it just takes turns all day long so you will come on in and pull up a chair <laughs> and let's craft for a little bit hey Miss Sheila from Sweetie's Creations how are you sweet friend thank you Miss Amy happy to see you so you all know I've, I love using uh, repurposing containers and jars and uh, whatnot, right? Well, today is no different. I have a super fun project and actually <clears throat> it's not the original project that I set out to do this morning. Um, I changed my mind a couple hours ago and so I've taken, <laughs> taken a left turn and we're going to try a new project uh, that I think will turn out really, really cute. So hop on board, <laughs> hold on to your seats and let's go, let's go. We are turning in one of those Country Time Lemonade drink mix containers. You will have seen me use those containers before. So in the past, we have used those Country Time Lemonade containers. I've turned them into some really cute uh, kitchen decor that I like to use to kind of stage in my kitchen from time to time. So let me flip my camera around so you all can see the labels correctly. And then let me get back to the comments. Hey, Miss Stephanie, how are you? Debbie and Teresa, how are you? So this is one of the little uh, Country Time drink mix lemonade containers, okay? It's a dry mix. You could get it at the grocery store, but I love the containers that they come in. They're like a really nice, substantial size, and so I've been repurposing them into lots of different things. So this is one, and then another one, <clears throat> that we did, and we do have live videos for both of these projects that I'm showing you right now. We turned it into one of these little faux tin candle lanterns, okay? So there's lots of things you can do with these containers. So when you're grocery shopping, shop around for things that you'll use, but then you can repurpose the container later. <laughs> I've got, my, my container stash is overflowing, so we're gonna have to be doing lots of containers uh, and jars and things um, upcoming. So, Today's though, I have given it a, just a base coat of a matte spray paint. You could do the same thing with like a chalk paint. Hey, Miss Gina, hey, Teresa. Uh, oh, thank you, you like that? The original projects often get changed, don't I know, I, I know. I was kind of tossing and tumbling over a project and I still have it over here on the side and I thought, okay, it'll, I'll save it for one of those impromptu <laughs> sessions that we gotta put together. Uh, so I've given this one a spray coating of just a matte black uh, spray paint. You could do the same with chalk paint. <clears throat> and then I have a really cute little design that I've printed from Etsy. And if you all want this today, you know, there's lots and tons of designers and, and, and printables on Etsy, and you can even find some free online. This is just one that I'm using because it's gonna kind of coordinate with a, a whole little theme that I'm gonna be putting together and bringing to you all uh, over the next week or two. But, um, and if you want this specific printable, let me know in the comments, and I'll be happy to share the link with you uh, following today's live. Now, th this one, what? No, I don't need those. Thank you, though. Um, this one is the one we're going to be using today, the Mrs. Claus Gingerbread Bakery, okay? Uh, and then I went ahead and printed another one, but this comes in a set of either six or eight different designs, and they are cute as a button. They're all holiday themed, uh, and I just happened to print two of them from the set. I cannot remember the name of the shop off the top of my head, uh, but I will be more than happy to share the link with you um, later on today. <clears throat> so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this can into a can light, 
okay you all I love using little candle lights here and there and tucked around especially in the winter when it gets darker earlier you have lots more dark <laughs> time in your day when you're at home and so I love these little these little lights that you can tuck in um, the little light that we're going to be using in this little can today is a, a little candle light. It's, I think it's like three and a half inches tall from base to the top of the uh, little stand here. But of course the bulb adds more height. But these little silicone bulbs are so cute. And they're so popular in primitive style decorating as well. So I found this on Amazon. Uh, if you can't find it on Amazon, you can just search for like three inch tall candle, uh, electric candle. But, you know, you'll probably be able to find it. If you need help, let me know. So, what we're going to do, we're going to kind of make this a shadow box can light. If that's such a thing. I don't know how this will turn out. We'll see. But, here's my thinking. I have a little template here that I wanted to kind of use to cut out. I need, a, uh, I need an opening in this can. Okay? And, uh, well, let's just roll with it. Let's just roll with it and we'll see how it goes. And if it doesn't turn out, uh, you know, we can always jump ship and I have another project over here on the side. <laughs> we'll see. All right, Fish Amy, I will be happy to share the link with you after today's live. It might be later this evening before I can share the link with you. Um, I do have some errands and things that I've got to do after today's live, but I'll always come back and share it with you guys. I'm usually pretty good about doing that. Okay, so this is just a little piece of cardboard, you guys. <laughs> it's just a little piece of cardboard. It's about the size of my little um, my little hole, my little frame that I want to cut out of my can. So here's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take... I'm trying to decide if I want the top of the can. I don't know. We'll just cut it equal. <laughs> we'll just cut it equal and then we'll decide afterwards. So I'm going to take a pencil and trace around this shape, this little template that I have. I just want to cut out a little opening here. And this is going to give us a little window, if you will, into our can light. So... Let me make sure that I don't move this little template while I'm going around. Okay. Now, if you want to get fancy, you could make a really cute little arch at the top. That would be really cute. You could cut out a star. Anything you have a template for is fine. You just need a good size opening that's going to allow you to see inside of your can. Hey, Miss Beth, what are we making? Hey, Miss Beth, that's something, Miss Beth. Miss Beth and I ran into each other a couple of days ago, <laughs> and she uh, stopped me, and I was so shocked and so surprised. But it was a nice, it was nice meeting you, Miss Beth. Miss Beth is another Kentucky friend, and uh, she just happened to be in my neck of the woods over the weekend, and we happened to run into each other over the weekend. It was such a pleasant surprise. Okay, so uh, next, I'm going to use a um, a little craft knife. Okay, my craft knife is not the best. Um, but we're going to go give it a go. Um, this canister, by the way, in case I forgot to tell you this, I, I did. It's kind of like a hard cardboard, so you can cut into it pretty easy. Hey, from Glasgow, Kathy. I lived in Glasgow for a few short months, <laughs> many, many years ago. Um, I had my first teaching job near Glasgow. So I know for sure. If you're talking about Glasgow, Kentucky, that is. I'm sure there's other Glasgows in the world, but... That's the Glasgow that I'm familiar with. <laughs> um, <clears throat> if you were going, oh, do I still, I do have a price tag. <laughs> a mini pearl today. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Margaret. I'm just going to yak that off there. I needed some Christmas um, colors today. Um, my closet is, I'm, I'm going through and cleaning out everything that I'm kind of over and tired of. And um, I am... Um, have just went and found me some cute just solid basic everyday clothes that I think will work through the holidays and through the winter and I grabbed this one at Walmart I love it I love the little ruffles and I don't know if you can see it this has got little quilting on the shoulders I thought that was so cute so so cute so anytime I can find a good reasonably priced shirt and I, I'm a biggie for solids I don't know why I just I like solid colors I think because they're just easier to kind of wear for, for whatever season it is. Okay, we're going to have to put a little oomph into it. 
I don't know how I got to cut this so straight the first project I did on this, but this one's not wanting to cooperate quite so well here. I am holding my other hand back out of the way. <laughs> All right, now, we are making, if you're just jumping on, we are making a primitive style Christmas can light shadow box. <laughs> Lots of uh, parts to it today, but it's super simple. And I think it's going to turn out super cute. But this is just a cardboard can. You could do this same idea with a Pringles chip can, uh, an oatmeal can. Hey, um, Greg, will you shut that? He's, he's, yeah, he's being awful nosy over there. You can, yeah, you can. All right. My fur baby. He knows that when I'm on a live, he knows that he can kind of nose around and get into stuff. <laughs> and we had some stuff sitting out, um, and he's like, hmm, I'm awful nosy right now. Mom's on camera. She's not going to pay attention to me right now. So <laughs> I'm going to explore my options is what he says. All right. I'm trying to do this fast but carefully, and I'm not doing this in a very straight line. I'm trying my best. We'll pull it out and we'll see what we got in here in just a second. All right, last, the bottom is the last little strip we got. All right, when you do this, <laughs> you can spend a little more time being tedious <laughs> about your lines, hopefully, than I am right now. Let me straighten this one, bottom one up. Now, it is gonna leave you a little bit of a raw edge which we will just take a little dab of chalk paint, black chalk paint, and cover up that raw cardboard edge, okay? So, ugh, this one didn't cut real clean because I already had my line, or my, <coughs> I already had my shape cut when I'm cleaning it up, clean it up. There we go. Okay, let me do a quick check here. Here's a little, little spot we need to shave down. Okay, this is all from grocery trash, you guys. <laughs> Turning this into something really cute. All right, now I did, I did go ahead and spray. <clears throat> hey, Miss Nancy. Hey, Megan. Thank you, Miss Debbie, for those stars. I appreciate you. I did go ahead and just cut that that out and I, when I spray paint in my canister I did spray the inside as well <clears throat> real quick that is not my black <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> I grabbed my antiquing glaze instead of my um, black chalk paint because it's the same brand same size and they almost look alike I just grabbed and <laughs> made a dash to the table before I started my life but that's okay <laughs> just something to cover up that edge I can come back over it with some black later um, actually, it might kind of give us a little bit of a, a grungy look. Might be an unexpected happy mistake. So I'm just going around that inside where I made that cut where you could see that raw cardboard edge. And I'm just going over it to darken it. <laughs> really intended to go over it with black chalk paint, but we're using antiquing glaze, which kind of cool too, I guess. Kind of giving us a little bit different look than I was expecting, but I kind of like it. It's kind of subtle, um, but it's just kind of giving a little, just kind of coating that edge, okay? And it's it's meant to look a little rough <laughs> and rugged, right? It's tattered. That's what we like about primitive decorating. All right, so let's set this aside for a second. The next thing we need, we need this little um, image right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this other one off on the side that I'm not using right now. We'll use this probably for a different project on another day. Okay, let's set that one to the side. This is the one I'm going to use. Isn't that cute? Love that. We need to grunge it up a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Something is not settling well in my throat. Okay. All right. I'm gonna, I just have a scrap sheet of, or a scrap, scrap 
paper plate. I'll spit it out in a second. <laughs> I'm going to go over this little image with a little bit of my coffee grunge. And I hope it doesn't make it too dark. We'll see. We'll test it. How about that? I guess I could have tested it on that little one that I just tossed over there. Um, let's see. I have one over here, an extra printable over here that's a little bit larger than what I needed. So let's test it on this one. We'll take that coffee grunge and go over it really light. Now it is going to be darker. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so let's set that over there. It's going to be a little bit darker when it's wet, but as it dries, it will lighten up some. Okay. If you make some coffee grunge of your own and it's too dark for you, just add more water to it and it will dilute it down. Okay. That's what you can do. Just dilute it down. I've noticed that it depends on the variety, the brand, um, or the strength of vanilla that I use. Sometimes it's a little bit darker than others. That's really the only thing that I use different because I use the same instant coffee. I use um, the same cinnamon every time. It's just the vanilla that sometimes I change, and I just I get the I get the cheapy. I don't get anything expensive um, because the cheap 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 works perfect for the coffee grunge recipe if you need the coffee grunge recipe i have it pinned in the featured section on my sweet home living facebook page okay all i'm doing right now is i'm taking my fingers and i'm feathering the edge of this um design okay and I, i'm not worried about it being perfect i want it to be tattered okay so give me just a second and I want to make sure that I don't rip it too much into the design. So I'm just peeling it down because when you wetten it, it softens the paper, obviously, right? So you're able to pull it, but you got to be careful. And you want to go overboard. And then that looks like a um, vintage label, okay? Now the edges, I do see a little bit of that white from um, that paper being torn. I think I can just kind of pinch it and it'll squeeze some of that coffee grunge into the edges. You know, like a freshly torn piece of paper. Sometimes you can see the white of it. I don't want to see that white. I want it to be a little bit darker around the edges. So I think I'm just going to take my little brush with some grunge and give it just a little bit of extra around the edge. You could also do this with some Distress Ink. Um, but since this is already damp, I did not pull I didn't pull my distressed ink to the table today either. So we'll just add this to the million and one thing, ways that we can use <laughs> the coffee grains. And now I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a dry. Let me put this on the paper plate. <clears throat> Alright, giving this a little bit of a dry. While that's drying, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, I realized I forgot something. Surprise, surprise! <laughs> that's what happens when you don't have all of your craft supplies within arm's reach. Typically forget something or another. And then when you change your mind, of course, at the last minute, that doesn't help either. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Jo Helen. How are you? 74 degrees and sunny in Maine today. Uh-oh. Yes, it's an unseasonably warm here a day here in Kentucky as well. Unseasonably warm for sure. And it, I think it's going to be all week and then I think come Friday or Saturday. <laughs> and time for the Barnsill Trail that we're going to in Southern Illinois on Saturday, Friday and Saturday. The temperatures are going to be much cooler, much cooler, much more like fall. Where do I get the labels, Marsha? I get them on Etsy. You can find some free printables online. If you would like the link to this specific set of printables, just let me know down in the comments and I'll be happy to share that link with you later, okay? All right, now this little candle light, this is going to go in the bottom of our can like so, okay? Now, what I'm not sure of is if I think I might wanna do it like this. Let me think about this for just a second. Do I do or not? Hmm. I don't know. I think we'll do it this way. I think we'll do it this way. And I may change my mind later, but if not, I can always get another Crunch Time Lemonade and do another one. <laughs> right? 
Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of Mod Podge on the back of this little printable. Where's my little brush, my little sponge brush? No doubt it's hidden under, there it is, hidden under something. Hey, Gray, if you can hear me, I need you for a second, please. Uh, I need you for a second, please. Um, over there in that second drawer, there is a bag of uh, mossy looking stuff. Gray moss. It's in a bag. Yeah, that's what I need. All right, so I'm going to put the Mod Podge on the back of this label. Thank you. Thank you. I'll need that in just a minute. Um, I'm going to put it on the back of this label. Uh-oh. Not the front. Rats. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put it on the back because sometimes, it, can, even though this is a matte Mod Podge, sometimes it can have a little bit of a gloss to it when it dries. Um, and I'm not sure that I want that just yet, so we'll see. Since I got a little bit on that front corner, I may have to wipe it off. Okay, so let's set that out of the way. Now, inside this can, on the back, on the back, inside there, okay, think of this as a shadow box. This is going to go right in the center of the view. Now, let me turn this away, turn this around my way so I can make sure I get it straight. Um, and then I'll give you a close-up. I think I probably cut my little uh, window out a little large, but we'll see. We'll see. You all can watch and learn from my mistakes, and if you want to change it when it comes time to making yours, you'll know um, what you like and what you don't like. Let me be your guinea pig. Okay, I'm just taking a paper towel and I'm just dabbing that down so that it sticks good to the back of the shadow of the can, okay? That's going to be cute. Yeah, I think I needed to make this a little bit smaller, but we can figure out some ways around it. All right, in the back of my canister, somewhere in the back, I think I might have to do it on the side, over here, on the side, I'm going to have to cut out a little hole for my plug to come through. Okay, so I'm going to use this same craft knife and cut me out a square that's big enough to feed my plug through. Okay, so let me see what we got going on here. I probably could get away with putting it. Let me just eyeball this real quick. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to put it in the back and the center. Um, even though it's going to kind of cut into the bottom of our little uh, label, the bottom of the label is going to be hidden, so we'll be fine. We will be fine. So let's cut out a little rectangular hole in the back. Carefully. Carefully. Okay. I don't think that's big enough. Yeah, maybe. It's very close. Let's make it a little bit bigger at the top. Okay, that'll do it. Let's cut off all these things here. I love these little candle lights. Do not like all the stickers that are on them, so I'm going to cut those off. Come on. Alright. Alright, here we go. Let's feed this through the bottom here. Now, let's fix our little design. We probably could have cut that hole out first and then Mod Podged over. That's going to be just fine though. It's not going to show. Let's get this cord. This is an extra long cord, so the good thing about it is it will reach pretty far. This is going to go in, I think, in my kitchen. Um, you all have seen the little area in my kitchen that I like to decorate on the, my little cozy corners, what I call it. Um, I think that's where I'm going to put this. Okay, so hang on. Let's, let's do a little quick 
switcheroo with some plugs and I'll show you guys what we got going on here. Which light is which? <sighs> Switching out cords. Here we go. Okay. This is going to be cute. This is going to be so cute. All right. So here's what we have so far. Oh, oh, oh. And I got to glue this down. This is what I'm going to do next is glue that down. But I'm going to kind of glue it towards the front, if you will. Okay. Thank you, Miss Carrie, for sprinkling this out. I appreciate that so very much. My cords are getting tangled. I'm going to put a little dab of hot glue in the bottom. Well, gosh, didn't realize my hot glue was nearly empty. All right, just a little speck there. And then let's make sure that this is front and center here. Let me eyeball it. Oh, this is going to be so cute. I just got to clean up the edges of my cutout. That looks kind of rough right now. Okay, so here's what we have right now. Now, around the bottom, you could use something like rose hips. Um, you could use, what else? I, I would probably choose to use rose hips. You can use some moss. You can use some pine. Um, if you have a really cute little pine candle ring, that would be darling. And I don't have one handy. Or do I? I do have a little candle ring right here. As long as I don't tear apart my <laughs> display back there. All right, I think I might use that little candle ring right there. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, yes, that's going to be so cute. So cute. Okay, let's tuck that in there. And then we can dress up the top. That's where we're going to have some fun as well. I have, let's see, I have some pit berries. I think I need some, I think I need some red in there. Where are my little wire cutters hiding? Come on, come on, wherever you are. There they are, over here. Okay, let's cut some of these little pit berries. Pit berries are another primitive style favorite. And we can make our own little mini candle ring to go around that. That'll give us a little extra color pop. And that'll also kind of bring out the red that's in that little printed design in the back too. It's gonna be so cute. Okay, let's kind of twine these, twist these around each other, and then we'll make like a little wreath out of them, okay? Then all you gotta do is spread out your berries a little bit. And then you have your own little mini candle ring to go inside of the big candle ring. <laughs> there we go, something like that, okay? Let's slide this right down over the top and we're gonna nestle it down in that green ray a little bit. Oh, that's looking so cute. So, so cute. Okay, I just wanna tuck those berries down just a little bit. Isn't that gonna be so cute? Okay, now let's get the top. Now the top, we've got a couple options here. I have like the regular lid <laughs> that I can put on top of this, okay? Now, it's not gonna show because I'm gonna dress the top up with some cheesecloth. But that'll kind of hold my cheesecloth and it'll kind of keep it from falling down in there, if you will. All right, I just stained, coffee stained, a big batch of uh, cheesecloth this morning and some fabric. So let's see, that lid, I probably should have went ahead and spray painted that lid. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm not sure we're gonna be able to cover it up all the way. I don't know we might we might we might we gotta do something there that's for sure so let's see what we got I'm just gonna cut some of this down and we'll start draping it over now I, my cheesecloth is a little thin so I am gonna double it triple it quadruple it whatever I need to do to make sure 
and I like to kind of pull, once I make a cut, I don't want a real straight edge. I like to just kind of pull that cheesecloth out and it kind of loosens the fibers, you know, the little threads and uh, makes it look a little more natural and not just like I just cut it. Okay, now let's see here. Yeah, that lid's gonna show. I should have painted it. I, I debated and debated about painting it and I talked myself out of it. Yeah, I should have left a little bit more of a, um, a little bit more of a rim. See at the top, I probably needed to leave like an inch of a rim at the top so that I could tie this down a little better too. So if you make this, you'll probably want to do that. I'm gonna use a little bit of some red homespun, I believe, is what I'm gonna use to tie around the top. And what I'm gonna do, sorry, I'm shaking the camera. Oh, you're new to me, Miss Terry, after the Vintage and Thrifted. Oh, thank you, I'm so excited that you're here. Yes, Miss Johan, save those containers, I'm telling you. Pringles cans uh, and oatmeal containers, like the big oatmeal um, cardboard containers. Breadcrumbs containers are really good for this as well. Just saying, you'll wanna save them. <laughs> you'll wanna save them for all kinds of little projects. Now, let me see. I'm gonna turn this around to me for just a second so I can kind of see what I like here, if I like it or if I don't like it. I want to tie it over to the edge. Okay, I think I like that. And I think I'm gonna do it double though. And I like bringing that red up there because it brings the red from the berries and it makes the, the red from, um, I should have just tied these together. Oh well, we're doing it our way today. <laughs> right way, wrong way, who cares? It's just our way today. It's a Monday way. All right, now I wanna put some of these little rusty bells on there. Let's see if I can't get um, my little fabric strips to feed through. There we go, feed through that little loop. Yes, we can, oh my gracious. Um, let's see here. We need one more. Let's put two bells on here, maybe. Feed that fabric through the top of that bell. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so cute. Okay. Oh yes, okay. Now, hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking, does it need something else up there? I've got, yep, I think we're gonna add a little bit of this Excelsior. Now my Excelsior is a little bit bright. I don't know about if you use this stuff, um, but what I have done in the past, <laughs> I've actually taken my coffee grunge let me show you. And I'll probably make a mess. Let me stir this up because I know my cinnamon and stuff's kind of gotten gunky at the bottom. I've been, I've had this sitting out most of the morning. So I'm going to take this. Let's get a little bit of the excess off my brush. I'm going to take this and I'm going to dab it on my Excelsior. And hopefully it will soak some of that in and it will make it look a little grungy. I'm just kind of rolling it in my fingers here as I just dab that grunge on there. Okay. Ooh, we about made a mess. <laughs> we about made a mess. We've got 311 watchers on here, that's awesome. We can cut out a piece of construction paper and glue it to the light. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, you definitely could. You definitely could. That would probably be a good idea too. I'm gonna probably wait till I see it in the light at night or in the dark <laughs> at night because I think I might actually like a little bit of the light shining through that clear lid. That's a thought, I don't know. So I think I'm gonna wait until I know for sure. All right, so and then I'm just gonna take that uh, little bit of Excelsior right there in the center. Do we need a few berries at the top? I think we should. 
I think we should. Let's see what we got. I keep pulling that cord. I'm so sorry. Hey, Miss Penny from Remake It Pretty. And Miss Marsha, how are you? Thank you all for hopping on. We are making a um, <coughs> primitive Christmas can light shadow box. <laughs> uh, just some wild hair idea that I had this morning. I already had my project for today planned out. And then this idea, I don't even remember what I was looking at. I was looking at something that caused me to think, oh, I wonder if that would work. And then it was just like one thing led to another. And now here we are. <laughs> here we are. Hey, Miss Pat from Unique. How are you? I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Okay. Let me get a front view here. Oh, gosh, you guys. This is so cute. Now. You kind of learned from a few of my mistakes today, right? <laughs> Don't make your frame quite so large, okay? You want to leave a little bit more of a rim at, at the top, okay? But I tell you what, you know, we kind of had some rough edges around when we were cutting it. You want to take your time, make your edges a little bit um, straighter than probably what I did mine. I was kind of rushing through it. But this, this stuff kind of hides the edges. But then if you see inside, you see that nice little backdrop. Well, let's see. Let's pull this over a little bit. I can probably trim that cheesecloth up a little bit. I kind of like it draping over a little bit, but you can see right inside that little shadow box. So it's got a little gingerbread printable. Now, you know what would really be cute? If you had some little mini gingerbread um, cinnamon ornaments, those would be cute. Now, what I do have that we could use. I've got these little pantry tarts. I've got a few of these little handmade pantry tarts um, that you could. Mm, those are too big. If you made some really, really small ones, you could get away with that and put it inside there like that. Is that not the cutest? Oh my goodness, you guys. I love it. I love it. So we've got three ideas that I've showed you to, well, not today, not three ideas today, but in the past, we've used this same style country time drink mix container, you guys, to turn these in. Oh, I knocked my little sweet Annie sprig off there um, into some cute little decorative pieces that you can use around your home. So if you missed the beginning, <laughs> this is trash, you guys. We turned it in and repurposed it for something that you can use in your home. The first one, I've just used a printable and made a cornmeal container grunged up this container with some brown spray paint and some black distressing ink okay a little bit of cheesecloth a sprig of sweet annie at the top and this sits in a little um countertop little mini cupboard that i have in a, the, a little corner of my kitchen so this is one way you can take this container look i didn't even spray paint the bottom of this container it's it's a cardboard container but you would never know it you would never know it and then this one uh, about a month or two ago, we used that same container. <laughs> we cut it down and we applied some black chalk paint and baby powder to kind of powder it up like a like a tin light. If you see see these little tin lights that I have right, right here, I've got two others around in different spots of my home, but it gives you that faux tin feel, like a real expensive tin light. And we made our own little candlestick and added some pit berries in that. Is that not the cutest thing ever? And then today, <laughs> today's newest creation is our little Christmas tin light shadow box. I love that. I love it. Now, if it's not grungy enough for you, which I could, I mean, I soaked my fabric in coffee grunge or not coffee grunge. I just soaked it in a, some coffee, but it's, it's not quite as dark as I would probably like for it to. I'll just take my coffee grunge, you guys, on a brush. Let me get a little bit of that excess out because I don't want to like soak it, soak it. Um, and with just a light brush, a light hand stroke, I'll just go over that fabric and just grunge it up a little bit more. And the same with your cheesecloth, you know, like because around the edges of your jar, if this is a true little old style jar, a can, you know, the, the edges are gonna look grungier because of, you know, it's been handled more, it's been carried more. <clears throat> the dust and the grunge is probably settled more around the edges. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this, I'm just gonna feather it from the edges in towards the center so that the lighter part is in the center see that 
I like that. I love that a lot. Oh my goodness. The surprises that you'll find if you just kind of keep working at it. Now, and I can just do the same thing with this. And if I dampen this a little bit, it'll lay closer to my container. And it'll look um, like it's been there, on there a long time. You know, not like we just stuffed it on there today. <laughs> but, the, and the other thing about this is, this, this is... Um, decoration and air freshener <laughs> all in one because the coffee grunge has the cinnamon and the vanilla and the coffee in it of course and it just gives a subtle cozy smell i'm telling you guys there's nothing like it let me grunge these little ribbon strands here i'm gonna grunge that down they're a little too bright i didn't must have not soaked them long enough usually i'll dry them and then soak them again but time did not allow for that today so and then I'm gonna put a little bit more in that little cubby right there. Okay, now we're gonna let that dry. Let me put a little bit more in this front part right here. And I like it to be kind of blotchy and look, because that to me that makes it look more natural. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see about that after it dries, but we grinched it up really good then so we just kind of toned down those whites those brighter colors and just kind of softened them with a little bit warmer and then gave it that good cinnamon smell as well see all the way around that is a little bit wet because i just kind of got a little bit of that grunge on it but um and then you can see we've got our cord coming out the back right there okay um you can put a little bit of black chalk paint to cover up that little cut cardboard piece if you're selling making these to sell um you know you would want to finish it off with a little bit of black paint uh, around those cut edges, but it doesn't get much simpler than that. We used grocery trash, you guys, and turned it into something so, so cute. You all hop on over to the Craft on the Clock group. We have more creators coming your way all day long, a new creator every 45 minutes. So every Monday through Friday, you guys. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm not sure if I'll be on another day this week. We'll see. We'll see. If so, I'll post it in my Facebook story so that you all can tune in. And I'll also share it onto my Telegram channel uh, if you want to sign up for Telegram notifications. There should be a little a link symbol somewhere maybe at the bottom of your screen if you're watching this on Facebook where you can tap on that and you will find my Telegram channel notification uh, sign up link. Okay? You all stay tuned for the next creator and I will talk to you again next time. Bye, y'all.